This week's episode of Still Untitled is brought to you by Orbi. Wi-Fi is something you don't really think about until you don't have it or it's not working properly. Videos buffering, Wi-Fi dead zones, everyone's home for the holidays fighting over that Wi-Fi. So when did you last upgrade your Wi-Fi at home? If you just want better Wi-Fi everywhere, check out an Orbi Wi-Fi system from Netgear. With Orbi, you'll enjoy super strong, fast, and more reliable whole home Wi-Fi from your basement to your backyard. Change your Wi-Fi world. Get Orbi, that's O-R-B-I, Wi-Fi system from Netgear and visit netgear.com slash Orbi, O-R-B-I, to learn more. Now on with the show. Hey, welcome to Still Untitled, The Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. You gotta maintain the norms, Adam. We have to to make a list of all the things that don't change. Yes, (laughs) the electrons are moving a little faster this week, I think. It's possible. It's entirely possible. I am in Buffalo, New York uh, this this afternoon. I'm actually going to see our uh, tested contributor, Terry Dunn, later on today. Oh, oh, you gotta awesome. fly some RC RC planes or quadcopters. I, I don't know what he has in store for me, but he's picking me up later on, and we're gonna hang out before the show. Oh, that's great! Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Awesome. It's, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Adam, oh. I, I assume your your American Thanksgiving is taken care of because you guys usually do like a family meal on the road on yeah. on holidays and stuff like that, right? We're gonna do our family meal on our next day off uh, with okay. the crew. Uh, tomorrow I'll be in London, Ontario, and my mom is actually flying up there this afternoon so that she and I can hang out tomorrow for Thanksgiving, uh, and then uh, and then she'll head back the next day. Meanwhile, my entire family in San Francisco is having their own Thanksgiving, the boys and Julia and everybody. Of, co- of course, crossing that border oh. on Thanksgiving Day, the, the busiest travel day of the year. I- is it weird to cross the border on Thanksgiving? Um We'll be crossing the border tonight at like 1 a.m. or something like that. So I don't suspect we're going to run into much trouble. Do, do they wake you up? Like, what's border crossing like in a tour bus, actually? I, I've. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I've done it a bunch of times now. Uh, first of all, the Canadian border agents get full props from me for being really awesome and super professional. Like, they're both scary and friendly at the same time. Like, they're genuinely sweet, but you know they won't take any BS. Um, yeah. And uh, so usually you're crossing sometime in the middle of the night uh, on a tour bus. Uh, you Everybody gets up, clears out. We get processed through with our passports. And then they come and they sweep the bus. They look at everything. They open. I don't know what they do on the bus because we're not on it when they, they look at it. A couple of years ago, um, I had bought a stuffed white goose <laughs> and I had it in the closet of my tour bus bedroom and we uh, we were sitting there waiting and the two border agents that were looking at the bus, the two Canadian border agents um, one of them came out and she was like a young female, I mean she couldn't have been older than like 24 um, and this big, you know, the military vest and all the gear that the, the border border agents wear and she comes out and she looks at us very seriously and she says, which one of you owns the goose? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, that was me. And she goes, that goose scared the crap out of me when I opened your closet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so oh, my so apologies good. to Canada. I didn't mean to scare you guys. Um, but I'm I really... always imagine. Go ahead. I always imagine when I, when I cross the border, um, because I wait in the line, like driving to Vancouver, and for some reason, whenever I do it, there's a lot of crows just walking along between the cars. Yeah, hmm. and it's like to me, they're the Night's Watch from Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, the, the, it's, the crows are there because people throw out the food they're not allowed to bring across I the border, know, yeah. right? Right. I, yeah, I always get really nervous crossing borders. I, I've done it a ton of times. I, it's always a source of like, oh, what if I what if I mess this up and I get I get locked in the you know? And I'm a middle aged white guy. I I don't know. It's got right. yeah. Anyway. So, um, okay, so it's day before Thanksgiving. Your Thanksgiving's done. Norm, you're getting ready to travel today. You're going to travel on the busiest travel day of the year. I am. For the first that's time. a myth. It is not the busiest travel day of the year, by the way. It is, like, what? number six <laughs> or something on the list. But go ahead. 
busting it, myths isn't your busy. job anymore. Just you know, <laughs> you're off the clock. Settle down there, Adam. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I am I am well prepared. Uh, yeah, going to Indianapolis, getting mm-hmm. on an airplane in about three hours or so, and um, looking forward to it. I have I have everything packed. I'm, I'm prepared. Well, well, last night I dry brined the turkey and spatchcocked it, so I've got a 36 hour dry brine per Kenji's recommendation. Uh, I cut the backbone out. I'm all ready to flatten it out tomorrow. And then after that was done, I was like, well, I have a couple hours. I'm going to go see Thor. And damn, that is a movie. Dude, how great is Thor Ragnarok? Oh my God. I, so real talk. I saw that trailer, the like the 80s heavy metal one with all the, the swipey neon uh, graphics coming in. I was like, there's no way this movie's going to live up to this trailer. But if it's as half as awesome as this trailer promises, it's going to be really good. And, and the movie is way better than I expected from the trailer. It has all the stuff that I liked about Civil War, all the stuff that we talked about on this. Uh, this is only a test this week, Norm, where, where there's like these great character interactions. It's the stuff that I get excited about Marvel movies for. And it, it's 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 just super fun and really entertaining and good. I I would go see it again. I liked it so much. So we'll, we're not we're gonna jump into a spoiler cast in like a couple minutes, but let's do a spoiler free like for mm-hmm. people who maybe just have seen that first trailer. Right, it's uh, the third Thor movie, Ragnarok. It's been out for I think most of you guys have probably seen it. We we all loved it. The tone were totally cool with how, how lighthearted, how bright, and and um how irreverent it was almost. Well, yeah. I Marvel has shown Marvel has shown. Like so, we recently had a spate of directors leaving uh, projects on the Star Wars canon because there seemed to be a uh, a difference of opinion between the director and the kind of movie they wanted to make and the kind of movie that uh, Disney Lucasfilm wanted to make. Right, there were competing visions. Whereas Marvel seems to keep on taking great directors like Joss Whedon and like the Russo brothers and allowing them to really marry their styles to the Marvel canon. So if you liked what they do in the shadows and hunt for the wilder people and Civil War, Ragnarok takes these things and joins them in this like wonderful, perfect ball of both love and adventure. And because they have so many characters, they can afford to do that. Not all their eggs are in one Thor basket. I mean, if the movie makes a billion dollars, they're thrilled. If it doesn't, it's okay. Like Ant Man didn't do super great, but um, you know it, it was it was so great. And then they can still make a sequel because they have all the money, well, and they, all the IP. I mean, they're making genre films that just happen to have superheroes in them, right? That's that's the difference. Is that Ant Man is a heist movie, and uh, 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 Guardians of the Galaxy is a space opera, and yeah, uh, what else? What a uh, Spider Man is a teen like a high school teen comedy that just happens to be about a guy that got bitten by a radioactive spider. And right. as a result of that, they're expanding the world of superheroes rather than just ha- having it be about big muscly people punching the shit out of each other for two hours. I actually, With the world being in peril, the same world being in peril. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I realized after leaving Ragnarok that the plot is almost, is, is almost just icing on the cake, right? Like, so many movies are like plot, 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 and you didn't feel like you got any character. Ragnarok's almost the reverse. Like it's all character driven, and the plot just happens to be there, so you can watch the characters be great. If you, if you look about what happens at the beginning of Ragnarok to what happens then, it is like a road trip. They're just one big detour. Right. The whole plot is one detour that they get off course, and then they have to continue on the way by the end of the film. But um, but and yeah, no, go ahead. Well, uh, no, go ahead, Norm. And the tone, the fact that. Thor 2 and 3, it is a sequel to Thor 2. The things that happen at the end of the Dark World that left it as a cliffhanger get resolved, and these are absolutely the same characters, but it can be completely totally different and have more comedy, and fans are okay with that. There's no continuity scare about that. Um, And now I'd love to dive into the spoiler cast aspect and yes, say, and so here we go. Turn off your radio if you haven't watched Thor. I loved the Matt Damon Sam Neill cameo in Ragnarok. What? And and Thor Where bro. We're... Thor bro Hold the on. third. We're we're Matt Damon and Sam Neill, Thor and Loki in the play. They were no, no, no. Thor was... and Odin in the play. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Loki and Odin. Loki and Odin. Sorry, that's correct. fucking Matt yeah. Damon. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and and who, who played Thor was the third Hemsworth. 
Is that the uh, Hemsworth from Westworld? Oh, is that the, the Hemsworth, Hemsworth from Westworld? Hemsworth. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so okay, like that opening set. So this is this is an important thing. They they maintain the fiction of that world. They're telling the same story. If there's a straight through line from Thor one to Avengers to Thor two to to Thor three, that that it makes sense. It's over the top. It's 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 the family drama you expect from a from a story about Asgardian gods, and like all each of those movies is distinct. It like it's it's an it's an it's an amazing. I think they had three different directors on them, right? Or was it? Were two no, three yeah, three different, different directors. Yeah, no, Kenneth Branagh and um, one of the Game of Thrones directors. And, and at the end of this film, you have like Thor has gone uh, like had a full arc for yeah. starting as the family fuck up who has to get kicked out of the family and has powers taken away, and ending with him self actualizing and becoming the god of thunder that he was destined to be. Are you yes. the god of hammers? One of my favorite lines <laughs> in the movie. That is and, what, and what? nothing against. Yeah, nothing against Alan Taylor who directed Thor two. Like we got a really cool Lord of the Rings esque Thor movie in the second one. You know, big capes, sharp swords, elves. Uh, but it was the same Earth in peril, right? London. You know, like it yeah. was the world was going to end, and it didn't make oh. sense because when you have a shared universe of all these heavy hitters, you can't have the world ending with every movie. Well, how great was also the Doctor Strange cameo? Like oh I totally God. didn't yeah. expect that. That blew my mind. Well, and it makes total sense, right? Like Doctor Strange is in charge of protecting us from magic stuff. Guess what? Loki's magic stuff, and he's bad news. He's on the list. Of course, he's on the list. Well, his his line about well, you know, uh, Thor's line about Earth has Earth has wizards now, right? It's it's t- the lexicon they share, you know, the mystic and the magic and the the high science of the Asgardians. It's so, it's all one thing. Serious question: Now that Thor has cut his hair, is it time for Kyle Hill to cut his hair? <laughs> I don't who's, think he'll ever do it. Who's Kyle Hill? Kyle Hill from, the, from Nerdist. From Nerdist. Oh. My friend from Nerdist Look, who hosted he has, the He has the long Thor hair. Cutting. <laughs> there's a time and place for long hair on men, and it is not right now. <laughs> Did you see? Uh, someone tweeted recently that the that the man bun is the mullet uh, of today. I, 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 walked out of, I walked out of the movie theater behind a guy with a man bun last night at midnight, and I was like, Oh, yeah. This is going to be a thing in a few years that we're going to make fun of. Okay. So back to Thor. We had some technical difficulties there. Look. The bit with Loki in the beginning replacing Odin. Like, I wondered how they were going to write themselves out of that hole when I saw... I rewatched Dark World the other day, which isn't a... It, it's not definitely not my favorite Marvel movie, but it's it's entertaining enough, I guess. This this takes the threads left by that and makes a, 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 a thing of joy. The interactions between Thor and the Hulk and Thor and Banner are everything I wanted out of a, a Planet Hulk storyline without any of the other bullshit that I didn't need, like Hulk getting married and all that stuff that would have messed up their relationships with... With uh, with uh, uh, the Black, Black Widow, Widow. and Natasha, um, like it's 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 fab. It explains where Banner's been during the events of Civil War and all those things. Like it it I I don't know. And and watching watching Thor just have a conversation, like playing both sides off of the middle with Banner and the Hulk, where he's like, "Look, I'm your friend, Hulk. You're the you're the strong one." You know, they go through the whole thing, and then he does the exact same thing with with Banner as the smart one in the in the Quinjet. It's it's fabulous. It's really good. So good. I, I think that was a uh, for comic book fans, right? The 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 um, a little bit of the, how the sausage was made. Like Marvel cannot do a standalone Hulk movie contractually, like because Universal oh. still owns the rights to standalone Hulk films. I didn't know that. So they they have to do and like Mark Ruffalo has talked about how he wishes there was a standalone Hulk film. So they had to find a way to tie it in, and they've. The characters they don't make sense. Like you can't. Ha- it doesn't make sense to have a Hulk movie and like a Hawkeye movie. They're just two different power characters. Right. But to put Hulk and Thor together makes total sense. And one of the fan favorite comic book series featuring the Hulk is this Planet Hulk story that Greg Pak wrote. And it's it's a uh, Hulk being the gladiator. Basically, he's on a planet where uh, the, the 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 tagline is the Hulk is no longer the strongest one there is. Like that's a selling point. Wow. So where Thor and Hulk are not the strongest ones when they're the heavy hitters puts them in a place where they can be vulnerable. Like not just physically, but uh, mentally. Yeah, it's it's 
I, Taiki Waititi, who directed Thor, is just um, instantly one of my favorite directors after seeing this. So you mentioned um, uh, Hunt for the Wilder People, right? Uh, and if you guys haven't seen it, you guys should watch it. Sam Neill's in it. Uh, the kid who's going to be in the new Deadpool movie is in it. He's like a, a breakout star. But one of the stars, because it's a New Zealand cast, and one of the stars that uh, is in that film that's in Thor Ragnarok is uh, this woman, Rachel House. And she, her deadpan delivery is so hilarious. Yeah, she's, who's, who's, who's she's, Jeff Goldblum's, she's Jeff Goldblum's right hand enforcer. Yes. She's a Moody woman yes. oh. who is in Hunt for the Wilder People, and she's brilliant in both. She, it's, it's almost the same character, the enforcer role, who takes her job too seriously and plays off Goldblum so well. And Goldblum well, can be Goldblum. He's Gold, fine. Gold, Goldblum. Gold, Goldblum is Pete Goldblum in this movie. Like, he's, he is Jurassic Park, um, 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 uh, awkward Goldblum in a delightful, wonderful way. Totally. The, the, like, what? Like the fact that he plays that character so self aware and he and, and is is aware of the fact that he's ridiculous. He knows he's ridiculous. Like like just just the pauses. The the one that the one that hit me last night was when when he he says, "Look, I could have been time works weird here. I could have been here for millions of years. Uh, I I be, you know anywhere else I'd be millions of years old, but here I'm." And then just leaves it hanging, like leaves the how old is Jeff Goldblum in this role hanging. It's just such a dumb, like I was the only person in the theater laughing. It was such a dumb Goldblum thing. Like, I, I don't know. I, I love Jeff Goldblum and, I, and he was fabulous in this movie. Me too. A Adam, what did you think about the, the costumes in this film? Like they changed up Thor, they changed up Loki, but they also had these really bright, They, I mean, it, a lot of the costumes you can tell in films are like foam, either foam fabricated or like, um, you know, um, polyurea. They're, they're not made of metal here. The costumes didn't assume to be looked of like, they looked like space material, like, like neon glow. Almost. Yeah. I look, I loved every bit of it. The weird world that they go to where the gladiator fights happened. Um, I, yeah, I, I thought the costumes were fabulous. I love, uh, I love Thor's new shorn look. The, 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 right hand pauldron on him that was yeah all of it fantastic uh the weta released a video this week because uh, they worked on the costumes for the film and uh it shows a lot of them doing that fabrication which looks very similar to a lot of the the costume we've seen before when we visited their shop uh but for carl urban who's in the film and how they layered his his armor uh, it, it's it's they're they're unafraid to put a bright light on it which in in many films because of the way costumes are made, they want to dramatically light it. And I don't think that's a deficiency of the director because some people could say, oh, maybe they chose a cinematographer who just didn't know how to light dramatically. They also have the Valkyrie scenes that look like paintings. Yeah. That look like with Kate Blanchett and the flashbacks that look mm -hmm. the most gorgeous, you know, hard shadow lighting you'd seen. Well, and speaking of that, how amazing is Kate Blanchett? As, it's like if you get to hire Kate Blanchett as your villain, you're like 70% of the way there. She's amazing. Oh. I, I, like, look, I, I, th watching her do that makes me want the Galadriel Goes Dark movie, right? Like, like I want to see, I want to see her pissed off and all powerful more often. And, and like, and I'm, I'm thrilled that they didn't kill her at the end of this movie. Presumably, like we didn't see her die, so presumably she's still alive. There's no lawyers, so she's she still exists in the universe. I hope we see more of of uh, of Hela. Hela, yeah, Hela. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hela, yeah. yeah. She's Hela. You good. could tell she, she was having, and everyone was having fun making that film. Oh. Like her smiles, her grimaces, the, the you know over dramatic uh, acting, like that was all intentional and fun. Um, while having a very serious backstory about, you know, essentially Asgardian colonialism. Right. And um, I, as soon as I realized that was Carl Urban, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Again, another actor who is often playing a supporting role, but if he's in a movie, and we've, I've said this before, he's going to make the movie much better. Well, so I, Thor, Thor fits in the film festival. Another Another entry for the Carl Urban Film Festival. That's all I was thinking the entire time. Um, I, so I, the, go ahead. I was gonna say it, we, Idris Elba also has been in that in that role of of the gatekeeper for two movies now, three movies. I think he's showed up in one of the Avengers movies too, 
And I was really excited to see him actually get to do something this go round uh, in a in a good way. So that was that was pretty good too. Real solid. Me too. Real solid. Um, can I change the subject? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I put a uh, a product on sale on Monday. Oh, you make stuff. <laughs> I made the Savage EDC oh, so one good. bag. Look at that. Um, and it went on sale on Monday, and we uh, we had a few hundred that were available to be delivered by Christmas. We sold out of those. We still have some that can be delivered by the end of January before we have to start uh, uh, a second a, a, a second construction phase. But uh, the sales were fantastic. I'm really psyched to see bags out in the world. Adam, give us a little backstory about the the designing of this bag and how it's been percolating in your head. So Tom Sachs introduced me to Marcos Mafia, uh, the the proprietor of Mafia Bags here in San Francisco. They are a company that makes bags. Most recently, we covered them on Tested with Eve Behar's bag um, out of recycled sailcloth and recycled kite surfing material, etc. Uh, and I mentioned to Marcos and sent him some drawings of a bag inspired by both Neil Armstrong's purse and the doctor's bags that I used when I was a model maker at Industrial Light and Magic. And Marcos and I came up with this, which is a wide mouth clamshell bag made out of recycled sail cloth with reinforced, uh, well, it's not Kevlar because that's a product name, Aramid fiber reinforced sail cloth <laughs> at the bottom and hook and loop on the outside. Um, Sorry, I'm getting infomercially, but uh, suffice to say... But wait, there's more. But wait, how much would you pay? Um, and Marcos uh, came back with a prototype that I traveled with for a while. We made a second prototype. I traveled with that and beat the hell out of that for a while. And we came up with this final design and were able to release it on Monday. I, I mean, I think more than like the, the bag itself, this is a culmination of of your your philosophy of how you use carry tools and use tools because you talk about the ilm you know the clamshell boxes you made that we featured on the site before Uh, this is like that but portable portable and one of the problems i have with gear bags in general and tool bags specifically is too many pockets pockets in a bag are my equivalent of drawers which I have no use for. As I've said, drawers are the place where things go to die. And pockets in a, in a gear bag, how many times have you gotten a cool gear bag with tons of pockets and filled them all, and then you lose the stuff in them. You're like, I don't know where my Zune is. And then you've got to go find it in one of the pockets. It's, uh, right. You no, know, I'm always asking totally. myself where my Zune is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in my garage somewhere, I think. I don't know. Star, Star-Lord has it right now. Yeah. The, my bag has one pocket. That's it. Uh, it's got open bottom with some Velcro because we hope to sell some expansion modules for it. Uh, and it's got some pen holders. And again, it's really, really simple. It's made so that the speed of being able to retrieve stuff out of it is the paramount functionality. First order retrievability. Yeah, exactly. Um, and well, I'm already I... starting to make drawings of the next prototypes I want to make with Marcos. Years ago, I got a rickshaw bag that was made out of sail, their their sailcloth equivalent. It's not as it's not as as uh, sturdy as the stuff that you used for the EDC one, uh, but it's it's uh, it's been my favorite bag for a long time because the material's indestructible, right? It's waterproof still after like four years of carrying it every day. I set it down on the ground. If it, it like it, it, I set it down in gum one day. And I literally just got a wet cloth and wiped, like scraped the gum off. And then the rest of the kind of gunk just kind of squeegeed right off. And it looked like nothing had happened to it. It cleans really easily with soap and water. It's like, it's an awesome material. And, and they, they were the first place I had seen that did the Velcro straps inside. So they just put like the, the non-sticky side of Velcro inside the bag. And then if you want internal pouches, you could just stick them on there with hard sided Velcro. So I have like a, a iPad sleeve and a laptop sleeve in, in that bag. And it's, it's, it lets me make the bag that I want rather than the bag that you, you want, which is great. Did the process of coming up with this bag and going through the prototypes, cause there were many iterations of, and some of which will, will show on the site when you get back in the cave. Um, does that change how you look at bags and like make you more of a product designer? Um, I'm not, that's a good question Uh, you know there's there's a lot of water under the bridge in the bag in the bag world um there are some amazing bag makers local u.s bag makers international makers and i've obviously we all have dozens and dozens and up in my loft i've got over a hundred different 
bags that I've used over the years. This really is like, this was a need that I personally had and fulfilled. And as far as me being a bag designer, I'm still trying to hold on to that exact thing. What are the needs that 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 I have that can be universalized into a, a into a certain kind of utility? Um, so. It might be that I don't go near the laptop bag because it's a space that is so crowded already uh, and there's a level of complexity required for a laptop bag that might render them completely unaffordable. I'm not sure. I'm going to talk to Marcos about this, but that may be a zone in which it's just not reasonable for me to dive in because so many people have been working on this problem for so long. Um, but that begs the question of what are the other parts of retrievability and utility that I can bring to the EDC system. Your, your bag holds a laptop, though. It's big enough to fit a 15-inch MacBook, right? It does. It's it. This is the first time I'm saying this publicly. It does. It doesn't do it necessarily ideally, even though I travel with my laptop in this bag. And to a certain extent, that's kind of... I didn't want to reduce the functionality of this bag to just being able to hold a laptop. It's it's more like a weekender overall utility bag that can do this. And I actually, I have some other prototypes of small tech bags that Marcos made me a few months ago that I'm using and again, are helping to inform what the next piece of the system might be. Cool, that's awesome. Uh, so have you, like, how is your, the bag that you carry every day, like, have you put cubes or anything in the bottom to kind of give you some like nooks and crannies or is it just one big dumping grounds in there? Uh, it is one big dumping ground, but I do have, um, so, uh, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, Marcos made me a pencil case out of sailcloth mm. and a uh, a more larger size. I mean, there's nothing ornament. There's there's no ornament to this at all. It's literally a sack with a zipper on top. Um, and I really like this size in my bag. It works really well, and I know where all the important things are. And they end up kind of sitting on either side of my laptop, keeping it centered. Um, I think got it, got I'm, I'm playing around with this design right now uh, to see what kinds of functionality I want to add to it. And also, I'm coming through because there's a specific piece of NASA kit that I'm obsessed with that I think I can uh, dovetail with this bag. It's, it all goes back to NASA. Everything goes back to the Apollo days. And, and they, you know, someone on Twitter pointed out rightly that um, it also seems inspired by the uh, by the stowage bags from the ISS, of which I own one, um, and they show up on eBay from time to time, and they're totally right. That's also so part cool. of the inspiration. They're they're so so cool. Um, so okay, uh, a couple other things. You did the spring steel. Did you talk about the spring steel opening? Because I thought that was really neat. Yeah, the clamshell spring steel, it's very well supported, and it doesn't have a hinge, unlike Neil Armstrong's purse, in which the two sides of the clamshell are joined by a hinge at their apex. Um, this one's open, uh, which is which is just really, really nice. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, it opens like a big fish mouth and just sits there open, and frankly, that's been ideal for me for traveling and finding stuff in it while I'm moving through airports, etc. It's so exciting. The idea that I may one day in the wild see one of these over someone's shoulder. It's like I once heard a, 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 a musician say that the, the best moment of their career was sitting in their car, listening to someone else in another car, rocking out to their song. My equivalent would be walking through San Francisco and seeing an EDC one over somebody's shoulder. Well, well awesome. it's a, uh, it's a, uh, what's the Tom Hanks, that thing you do when they're listening to the radio, right? And, and their song comes on and they lose their minds. I, I can't imagine how exciting that would be. Y you um, calling Adam cool. a one hit wonder? No, he's a no neither. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's really simple. I could be a uh, one hit wonder. You never know. Listen, if this ends up being the only thing I ever like, uh, sell a reasonable number of, that's fine. This is, this is, it's, it's been a lovely journey and, uh, the, the going through all the interstices, even down to like making sure I've worked up a privacy policy that I want to <laughs> adhere to. I get to now write those things like, we're not going to use your email for anything other than emailing you about these. And if you unsubscribe, we will forget you. <laughs> in in okay, the best um, way, in the right way, in the way you've asked us to forget you. <laughs> so when Adam, I, you're... Oh, go ahead, Norm. You're having both your book year in terms of you're writing a book with Drew Curtis and your bag year in the same year. It's true. I'm. I'm. I might be. I, am I taking up too much space? Should I? Should I scale it back a little bit? No, no. That's great. It's like these are per personal journeys and and so satisfactory. 
Uh, I had a couple questions from people when I posted about your bag on Twitter yesterday. Um, w one was it's described as limited. What is like, are people gonna be able to get this indefinitely or is it going to go away at some point? Or what does that mean? We're going to keep making them as long as there's orders. So, okay. They're not going to sell out. I'm not, I haven't put a, a limit on the edition at all. Um, we just had a certain number that were available to be delivered by Christmas, the maximum amount the factory could make and deliver. Uh, I believe the final shipping date is the 19th to guarantee Christmas delivery. Um, but there's still plenty that are that can be ordered that will be delivered by the end of January. At that point, if we sell out of those, we're just going to say uh, we're out of stock for now. Um, and we'll probably delay for a couple of weeks taking new orders until we have a factory pipeline that guarantees a delivery date. I don't want to sell a bag without being able to guarantee a specific delivery date. Okay. I think that was the big one. Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I think that's a good place to end. Um, I got to get on the road soon, start packing. Uh, Adam, you have a show to prepare for. Uh, Will, you got a turkey to attend to, to, to dispatchcock. I wanted to tell it's you one, one thing is that, um, I, I, you know, I have my kids. Uh, I had my kids with another woman besides my current wife. I was married before. Um, and as such, I enjoyed Thanksgivings with a whole different family 15 years ago. Uh, my ex-wife's family and my my old my ex-mother-in-law, my noni, as it was because she's Italian, um, had an amazing recipe for a sweet potato pie with a marshmallow covering. Oh. And wow. my my current sister-in-law, my now sister-in-law, asked me, do you have that recipe? Because I had been waxing on about how delicious it was. And my ex-wife uh, uh, very generously not only shared the recipe, but in her mother's hand, she took a picture of her the original wow. recipe that her mother came up with. And it's like, I'm so jealous that they're going to make it because it's one of the best Thanksgiving dishes ever. That, that, that like that's one of those things everybody has right everybody has the family we've had we've hosted east coast expatriate thanksgiving for almost 20 years now and usually we tell people to either bring the thing that they love like their family the thing that they think when they think about thanksgiving bring the dish that, that is the one or like give us the recipe and we'll make it right so we make like my friend brad's broccoli casserole and um green bean casserole from somebody else and and like like that's what makes that's one of the things that makes Thanksgiving special. It's my favorite holiday of the year. So um, I hope you guys have a really good one and don't work too hard tomorrow on the road, Adam. Enjoy your Canadian, uh, you know, Thursday. I will. I will uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving to both of you. Safe travels, Norm. Uh, enjoy spatchcocking, Will. Oh man, I'm always spatchcocking. That's that's <laughs> that's my nickname. Awesome. See you guys. Right. See ya. Bye.